The safe crossing times from the mainland to Holy Island and across the causeway for our visit were between 9.30 and 4 p.m. The main car park was situated approximately 200 metres from the main village. It's a flat walk with local well-known St Coombs farm stall along the way. There's a shuttle bus that runs regularly from the village to the castle. There is parking beneath the monument, but it is uh, restricted for certain users. Please check on any restrictions before you visit. Lindisfarne is well documented for the Viking attack of 793 AD on the monastery established by St Aidan. The castle on Holy Island is in fact not a castle. It's a fort built during the reign of Henry VIII. The construction began in 1542 and was completed in 1550. In 1567, cannons were added, requiring the earth-built sides to be reinforced with stone. Apparently, accommodation of the garrison was built from the stone of the ruined priory. The approach to the main gate from the kiosk is quite steep and a challenge if you don't favour heights, although there is a fence barrier and a rope banister. Restoration of the main castle as a house took place in 1902 and eventually passed on to the National Trust in 1944. The lower battery housed the cannon emplacements. The views of the Northumberland coast, looking over to Bamber Castle, are quite stunning and full of natural wildlife. Inside the main entrance, you'll find a display about the history of Lindisfarne Castle, which involves three main characters. Edward Hudson, who was the occupant, Wilhelmina Sugia, who was a cellist, and Lytton Strachey, who was a biographer that actually only visited the castle once. Once you reach the upper battery you get 360 degree views of the whole Northumberland coast looking back onto Lindisfarne village. Oh.
In the upper bedroom we found an artist's installation. The concept behind this was to employ a cellist to replicate the sounds of the island, the sea, the seals, using the cello. Quite haunting, quite interesting to check out. You can find more information about this and the artist on the National Trust site. This bedroom represents the presence of Wilhelmina Sugia. She met Edward Hudson in 1914 and they were later engaged in 1919, but they were never to marry. Hudson put the house up for sale later that year. Strachey, the biographer that visited in 1918, kept in touch with Guelmina Sugia until 1922. Information suggests that there may have been an influence that Strachey had on Sugia and how he thought she was too good for Hudson. In 1911, artist and writer Gertrude Jekyll designed this small walled garden 